Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome all of our guests this morning at Revival Tabernacle. Thank you for coming. Several people, several people out this morning. We're glad you're here in the presence of the Lord. And thank you for making it through the wind and the what some of you are saying, freezing weather. Apparently you were not here in January when it was 12 degrees and Kate got baptized and, and uh, someone else got baptized in that cold water. Turn me down just a tad in the monitors, guys. I don't want everyone to go deaf. Thank you. If you have not checked out your raffle tickets for the car that's right outside, we are, Brother Kate is selling that FJ Cruiser and we have a website for it now, which is rtfundraiser.com. And if you have not checked out your envelopes today, please do so. We are trying to raise money for the building fund. Something's happening with that building, by the way. The, um, we ran to the bishop two times last week in restaurants randomly. And then when we were gone, we went to Virginia and preached uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We were at a conference and. Uh, he texted us while we were gone and said, have you found a venue for your conference yet? And I said, no. He said, let me see what I can do on our end. I'm going to get back with you. So apparently they're really wanting us to be there. We, please keep that in prayer. That's the place God said that we would be, and we're holding on to that promise from the Lord. Amen. Amen. I encourage you today be a part of the kingdom of God. Thank you for all your prayers while we were away. The Lord did mighty things. It was a powerful conference and God did move. Luke chapter 5, verse 1 through 10. Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. This will be my seventh time ministering in the last seven days. So if I seem a little tired, I apologize, but I will get with it if you will get with it. And if you don't get with it, I'll still get with it until you get with it. Luke chapter 5, verse 1 through 10, it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him, he would thrust a little out from the land, and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word... I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. <laughs> when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished and of all that were with him and the drought of the fishes which were taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. I want to just use this. I... This is uh, probably not the text if I were choosing to use for my subject, but I'm just following orders. And I want to kind of really focus in on that conversation where he said, we've, we've, we've done everything we can do and nothing happened. And I want to preach to you on the failure of faith. The failure of faith. Lord Jesus, I love you. No one's here accidentally this morning. You've brought everyone 
for a divine purpose. People are here for different reasons. Some are here to receive. Some are here to release. But I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would do whatever you want to do in this room. We take authority over every attack on every home, every mind, every body, every relationship, every marriage in the name of Jesus. And I speak peace to every troubled wind and every family right now in Jesus' name. If you love him, would you clap your hands to him one more time? Praise the Lord. And the words you're all waiting on, you may be seated. Everybody said, ah. Faith is usually all that we need. Most people live with such low faith that if it gets just a little bit larger, like the size of a mustard seed, something good can happen. That's what Jesus told the disciples. If you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you can really start moving mountains and seeing things happen. But the problem is most people have such small faith because of what they see in their current life situation. The Bible talks about having great faith and little faith and different levels of faith that are available. But most people, I would say, that live for God, live for God at a very low dimension of faith. Most people are much closer to their miracle than they realize if they would just get some more faith, they would see some stuff happen. But because they're speaking negatively and because they're releasing doubt and because they're releasing fear and and anxiety and worry nothing can happen with those words and so they wait and wait and wait until their faith rises faith is what usually gets the miracle according to your faith be it unto you that's what jesus said all the time when he would heal people you got the faith yeah okay be healed and because your faith is currency for the miraculous anytime you have faith and you've got a lot of it something's about to happen you're gonna see god do something before it's over faith gets the miracles. Anybody with faith in the building and you've got it aimed at something. I need God to take this faith and fix this situation. I need God to take this faith and move that mountain. I need God to take this faith and heal this body. It's faith. That's why you come to church and why you hear preaching and you leave a different way than the way you came because faith cometh by a hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you come in low, but when faith gets a hold of you, something grabs you and says, I'm not leaving the same way I came because I feel something building in my spirit that's saying it's not over. God has a plan for my life. I came in feeling like a failure, but I'm leaving feeling like a victor because something has grabbed my Faith brings quick miracles. Some, some of you are so close, you would just charge the giant, just step out of the boat, just roll away the stone. Some of you are so close to your miracle. Faith usually connects you to the miracle until it doesn't. There are rare times when you exercise all the faith you have. Because you know God said he was going to do something. You feel it in your spirit. And you release all your faith toward it. You release all your faith toward it because you are confident that God is going to do it. And therefore you pursue like a cheetah on a gazelle. You are just chasing it down. I'm not going to stop until I get it. And so you take all your faith and you go after the one thing that God said was yours. And you chase it with a fervency and a fire that cannot be stopped. And you know. I've got a word. I've got a confirmation. I've got a promise. My baby's coming back to God. And so you make up your mind, whatever I have to do, whatever I've got to go through, I'm going to get this miracle before I die. Something's going to happen. And you release all of that faith. And each time you pray and you break through and you feel God saying it's going to happen and you get up and you wipe your eyes and you feel peace and then the day comes and the day goes and nothing changes. And then the next morning you get up and you pray again and 
Oh, yeah, it's going to happen today. I, I'm, and you're looking at your phone waiting on that text. Something's, it's going to, I feel it. Today's the day I'm getting the call. And, and then nothing. And the miracle doesn't happen. And each time you, your faith takes a blow, it gets weaker and weaker. Peter should have had immense faith right here. Because the day before, his mother-in-law was dying of a fever. And Jesus went into that house, touched her hand, and healed his mother-in-law. Now, I'm not sure if that was a miracle to Peter. <laughs> I'll just leave that one. No, I won't. I'm going to go there. Uh, <laughs> some people would not consider that a miracle at all. They would think I'm being cursed by God. Thought you were taking her home. <laughs> Sorry, you can, you can laugh. You're, some of you are afraid to move right now. I didn't even blink your eye. I love your mom, babe. Ever heard the story? The guy went to Israel with his wife and mother-in-law, and she, the mother-in-law died suddenly, tragically, on the trip. And so they didn't know if they should fly her body home or bury her in Israel. And so he asked the people there, and they said, it was going to cost you $10,000 to fly her home, or you can... Take, uh, just for a very cheap price, you can bury her here. He said, I'll pay the $10,000. He said, they said, why? He said, last person I read about that died here rose again in three days. I'm not taking a chance. Take her home. I have a great, wonderful mother-in-law. Some of you aren't even smiling this morning. You hate that person so much. I was with you till you brought that up. Can't even call it her, that. Peter just watched him raise his mother-in-law up from death. And he saw that miracle and said, I'm going fishing. I mean, he's called me by name. He's healing my mother-in-law. He's going to bless my business. And so he gets his buddies out. We're going to go catch fish. Jesus, I mean, we are living the dream, baby. We have God Almighty. We're the chosen out of the whole world. He's going to bless everything we do. He's going to anoint our every move. So they take the net, not the fishing pole, the net, and they throw it out and they pull it back and there's no fish in it. And they take the net and they throw it out and they drag it back and there's no fish cast after cast, throw after throw. The strain of pulling the net in every time empty leads to not just physical exhaustion, but emotional exhaustion. We're not getting anything. We need money to pay the bills. We need the fish to come in. We've got to get something or we're not going to make it. Exhaustion is a sign of fading faith. Anytime you feel exhausted waiting on God, your faith is starting to fade. You're giving it all you can, but he's not changing it. He's not fixing it. He's not moving it. And so you keep launching the net and you keep throwing it out there, but it keeps coming back. Have you ever thrown it out and it came back empty? Have you ever released the prayer and it came back empty? Have you ever released your faith and it came back? Empty. Trying and trying. He knows I'm a fisherman. He knows my mother-in-law was sick. He healed her. He, he came to me and told me to follow him. He was the one that pulled me out. Why is he not blessing this? He knows where I am. That's what he says. Lo, I'm with you always till the end of the world. He knows everything about my life. He called me by my name. Surely he knows I need a miracle right now. By the way, I'm not preaching about Peter. I'm preaching about you. And so finally the day is breaking. And the final cast. You don't throw it out with the energy at 6 a.m., when you've been throwing it out at 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. and 12. I, some of you have no idea what this dimension is. It's called praying so long and so many times that when you'd come to the prayer meeting, you can barely even mention it. You're just like, God, please, please do something. 
Whenever you're praying, that's because you were once praying. Today's the day you're going to move the mountain. And the next day, I know you're going to make a way. And if it's not your will today, it'll be tomorrow. And you just keep throwing that net out. But after a while, Days breaking. Pull it back. What's is there anything in the net, Pete? Nope. Let's go clean the nets with no fish. Clean the nets was usually something they did after they caught fish. But this time they've caught seaweed. This time they've caught things that are connected to the net and nothing productive has been pulled in by their efforts. They've given all they've had. They've exhausted every ounce of faith that they have and it's over. And so when it's over, they start cleaning the nets. And here comes Jesus. Y'all ready? Let's go. That was all commercial. Here comes Jesus. And Jesus just walks right up in their boat. Sometimes God is very rude. Just gets in. Peter's not even paying attention. Jesus starts messing with him. Do you mind if I use your boat to teach everybody? There's nothing like God asking you to do something when he's not doing something for you. Some of you don't know that level exists. It does. There's nothing like God asking you to do more for the church when you're doing everything you think you can just to get to church. You want me to do that when I've, I'm, I'm asking you to do this and you're not doing that, but you want me to get more involved? You want me to give up my Monday night? You want me to give up my, I've got so much going on. If you would just do this one thing, I would do anything, but you're not doing it and still expecting me to do this. You mind if I use your car? That's what he was saying. Like you've got no gas money and the Lord's like, can I borrow your car? You worked all week, did not get paid. You mind taking me somewhere? Yeah, I kind of do mind. I don't have any strength left. That's anytime God, watch this, starts asking you more than you can do, it's because he's about to give you more than you've ever had. And so you've got to trust him. He knows you're drained. He knows you're exhausted. He knows you're broke. He knows you're weary. He knows you're tired. He's not trying to kill you. He's trying to connect you to the next dimension that's beyond where you are. Morning, Pete. Can I use your boat? Ever had God not leave you alone? No? That's something you need to start praying more, I can tell. Can I use your boat to teach the people? What? what, what? Yeah, I, I, I want to use your boat as my platform. He's, he's not letting Peter walk away. He's messing with Peter. When Peter wants to say it's over, he says it's not quite over. When Peter says, I just want to quit and go home, I'm worn out. I don't want to go to church today. I'm, I deserve a break from God. He shows up in your living room. Hey. You really going to drink that? Just, just, I'm trying to backslide. I'm, try, I'm trying to, as some people call, I, I deserve a night for the flesh. Like, sucker, you live in the flesh every day. You need a night in the spirit. You need an all-night prayer meeting in the spirit. <laughs> He's like, just want to, just want to. He's showing Peter that he, he, I love you even when your faith leaves you. Peter's faith has failed, and Jesus starts teaching word. 
faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word. Peter's faith has failed, and Jesus still expects him at church Sunday morning. Ooh. Jesus wants you here. Even when he doesn't answer your prayer about your family being here or your situation changing, he expects you in the boat. He expects you to be in the boat. <laughs> Even when I don't want to listen, word starts coming to me. Don't you hate it when you're, uh, I'm just, mm. I'm going to be me. I'm sorry if y'all don't like it. Uh, you ever been mad at God? Like eight people. My good Lord, some of you do not pray. Because if you have a prayer life, you will get mad sooner or later. Thank you, Brother Dwayne. It's the truth. You will get mad because it's like, hello. I'm praying you're not doing anything. And then you show up to church when he hasn't answered you. And you hear stuff like this. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all you ask or think. And with God, nothing is impossible. And if God is on my side, whom shall I fear? And greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And you can't outgive God. And give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Pressed down, shaken together. Right? And you're like, this is nothing like mine. In fact, some of you just got mad right there. That's why I wanted to stay home today. He hasn't done any of that for me. And he stops teaching. He's releasing word. And there's this awkward in-between where he's just looking at Peter. What's really going on here? He teaches the lesson. Peter's faith is dead. And Jesus is just staring at him. What's, what's going on here? And Jesus said, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought, for a massive haul. Peter's response is the proof of failed faith. Lord, we did this all night. We worked ourselves to the bone, and nothing happened. You didn't help us when we wanted. When it was dark in our life, you weren't there. When we were going through hell, you didn't show up. When we were losing everything and exhausting ourselves, where were you? And sometimes it's almost like you want to tell God about how bad it's been as if he has no idea that you're going through a dark... Why do you think he's telling you to launch out, dude? Because he knows there's no fish in your boat. He knows when I have done all I can do and nothing has changed. He knows when my faith has exercised itself to the limit and it has failed me. Sometimes you have to work out until you get muscle failure. And when you get muscle failure, you can barely move. You've got fatigue. But that's how you know a, ch a change is happening in your body because failure is a sign of a break. So what's he, what's really going on here? This is what the Lord's been talking to me about. I hope you can get it. He's pulling Peter out of the dimension of faith because there's something beyond faith called trust. But trust only shows up once faith has died. Trust makes you go to church when he didn't answer your prayer. Trust makes you get up and pray the day after your dream died. Trust. Trust makes you pay your tithes when you're still waiting on the position. Trust makes you hold on when nothing seems to be working. Trust. 
You've tried this your way. Let down your nets for a drum. One boat ride with God. And everything faith has pulled you to is now connecting you to a God that says go all in. I want to talk to you so, about the speed of trust. When, when God wants your faith to increase, he's planning on giving you a quick miracle. Okay? When God gives you a trust test, it's a slow miracle. If you want the Red Sea to open up and you want to go through that, you need faith. But if you want to survive 40 years in the wilderness, you need trust. <clears throat> And some of you are mad at God because he's not giving you the miracle and you've had faith. But you're trying to pay with the wrong currency because faith is not what you need for this situation. You need to trust God that he's going to do it when you can't do it. When you can't do it yourself. And when faith doesn't move the mountain, trust climbs the mountain and says, I was made to walk on this to see things from a different point. Somebody ought to praise him right now. He's not forsaking you. He's not walking away from you. He's teaching you to see things from a more picture. See, we normally backslide when our faith doesn't work. Well, I went all in and nothing happened. I'm not going this week. Because you're trying to use faith. In the game of trust. Because if you only live by faith, you will have to have quick answers all the time and expect God to do whatever you pray because that's what faith teaches us. You speak it, it happens. But when it doesn't happen, what do you do? You've got to disconnect yourself from faith and step into trust. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Well, but there's way, there's a lot more. You ready? Peter doesn't trust him. Anytime he's teaching you trust, ready? This is so powerful. It's because you don't trust him. Even if you think you do. He thinks you don't. Let me show you. Peter said, I've, we've done this all night. Nevertheless, at your word, I'll let down the net. Jesus said, let go of the nets. Peter said, I don't trust you. Ooh, I'm sorry. Partial commitment to the kingdom is the loudest way you can scream, I don't trust God. Oh, I'm sorry. I am going to get up in your business. I hope you don't get mad at pastor. But when you only want to be partially connected to the church, it's because you don't trust him. You don't trust him. And so more than likely, you're going to go through a longer trial. Faith, when, you, when God's saying have faith, He's saying get vocal, get loud, speak, prophesy, declare, pursue. When God's saying have trust, he's saying shut up, listen, wait, be quiet, walk, endure. But we don't want to do that because we want our miracle microwaved. And so we say if, I, if my faith doesn't do it, I'm just going to go to this church. I'm just going to go over here because I did everything I was supposed to do. No, no, no. You did everything you did until your faith failed. But because God wants you to walk in a closer dimension, he's got to make your faith fail you so you can trust. Sit down. Let's go deeper. There's more here. Wait, wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. So if Peter fishes all night after Jesus just did the miracle for his mother-in-law 
and he gets fish. He's got faith. Man, God's with me. But the problem is, ooh, I want you to get this. If God wants to get glory in a situation in your life, and the faith that you walk in will not give him glory, but will give you glory, he makes sure that your faith fails. I want you to catch this. Because Peter would have said, I caught these fish. Because he had an attitude and said, look, I'm, I know you're God, but this is what I do. And so when faith says, I believe you can do it, but when you're done doing it, I'm going to make sure I give myself part of the credit for what happened. God says, you're not giving me glory. And I can't give you a miracle that you won't give me glory for, my God. And so therefore, I've got to put you in a place where you can't praise your ability, you can't oh, shut up. You can't praise your net, you can't praise your boat, you can't praise your skill. You have to praise me because I'm the only one that can make that happen. Welcome to trust. This is good. Sometimes God is forced to take my faith from me. He wants me to walk in faith. If he takes my faith from me, it's because there's something in me that does not give him enough glory for what he does for me. Oh, are you getting it? Something he's doing for me continually, I'm not thankful enough. So quick miracles aren't making me praise him enough. So therefore, he puts me in a long struggle, shut up, in a long battle. And by the time I come out of it, Brother Showalter, I'm not having faith in him. I'm just trusting him. I don't care what you do or don't do. I just want you to do whatever you want. That's, that's trust. I don't have to have the miracle, but I have to have you. I don't have to have the answer, but I have to have you. I don't have to have the money, but I have to have you. So Peter said, I don't trust you. And he said, I know you don't. That's why you been fishing all night, sucker. You'd be shocked the people coming to church right now that don't trust him. Trust him in every area but that area. Trust God with your health but not your money. Trust God with your money but not your health. Trust God with everything but something. And when God knows you don't trust him, he puts you on the wheel. You can go around and around and around in the same situation until the revelation hits you that you can't fix this and you need me. And your faith won't do it. Your trust has to do it. I, I, I did everything I could with my faith for this building. Everything I could. I don't care what anybody says. I know what I've done. And finally, two days, three days ago, I got up in the morning. I said, I've done everything I can do. I'm letting it go. You do what you want. If this is a mirage, I'm sorry. I, you told me something, but if you're not, whatever. It's on you. I'm letting it go. And then I go to the restaurant, and here they come. And the next day, I go to a restaurant I've never been to, and here they come. Both times we bought their lunch. And the Lord said, this is called me being in control. Get out of the way. Get your hands off the steering wheel, dude, and let God drive the car. Well, I have to be in control. Well, you're going to wait all your life, sweetheart, until you let go. You're not going to get it. But once you let go, Jesus can show you.
Where's the money going to come from, God? Where's the, where's the breakthrough? And I don't know. I don't have to know. I just need to let God be God. I, God has the coin. My pastor's called me three times in the last two weeks and said, God has the coin in the fish's mouth. He already has somebody ready. Everything's going to be all right. Just keep walking toward the miracle. Just keep trusting God. That's all I'm going to do. If you don't want to do it, then do your thing. Walk by faith. That's awesome. But sometimes you've got to walk by trust. What are you doing today, God? Stay standing. And the net broke. And when the net broke, the fish were getting away. And they said, hey, guys, come help. Bring the other boat. And the Bible said they had so much fish that the ship started sinking. And it hit me. He is sinking their ships and breaking their nets because he's removing their sources of power because they're about to change jobs. And what they thought they had to have, they're not going to need because the same way you caught fish, Peter, is how you're about to preach to the entire world and catch people. But to get you to be a preacher, you've got to trust me with your business. Oh, I'm not getting much help on that. You see how money some of your gods? God said, I'm going to sink your boat. I'm going to break your net. Because you don't trust me. But when this thing is over, even though I've blessed you, you're going to want to walk away from it because you're going to know just as quickly as I can bless you, I can sink you too. And so you're going to trust. And Peter runs to Jesus and falls down and says, I am a sinful man. In other words, I can't believe I thought I knew more than you about my situation. Next time I'm on the water, I'm going to try to walk like you do on it. I'm going to become a different person from this message. Because now I realize some things are faith-based, but some things are trust-based. And you have to know what language God is speaking. Is he saying, trust me or have faith in me? Because it's two separate things. Is he saying, speak to it or is he saying, climb it? Is he saying, go after it or is he saying, watch me? Is he saying, stand still or is he saying, go forward? You have to listen. Faith, you have to speak. But trust, you have to. I feel, the, I feel like our church is maturing right now because we have, we have given our absolute all for this miracle. Hello. How many have fasted at all for this building? Look around. How many have prayed and prayed and prayed for this building? We can't even hold it in here. I have to come in here on Sunday mornings and cast devils out of here. There was, an, there was a comedy show in here last night. Oh, who knows the evil words that were spoken right here last night. And at 6 o'clock in the morning, 6.15, when we were walking in with, by the way, thank you for all the guys that are at 6 o'clock in the morning getting up and setting this platform up. I give you honor. Brother Puckett, Brother Andrew, Brother Alisea, Brother Troy, Brother Gabriel, Brother Cordero came. Somebody else was here. Who else was here? But Randall was here. Thank you. And Jude and Jet were here. When I walk in that door, while they're out there, I'm praying I cast every devil out of this room. I can't take it much longer here. There's spirits that come in here all the time. 
shouldn't be in the, in the house of God. But I've been giving my faith for this until my faith failed. And that prophet, Brother Smith, called me and said, God has let your faith fail you. Welcome to the dimension of trust. And that's all he said. And I said, what does that mean? He said, go find out. Well, I found out this morning. Are you ready? Because he's going to do something we, we can't do. He's going to provide in a way we cannot make it happen. It's going to be God. Some of you need to grab this message right now before you sink. Demanding God to do it your way. Going down with the ship. Because you're demanding God do it your way. You need to let go and say, I trust you. I don't know why you haven't saved my kids yet, but I don't know why you haven't saved my family yet, but I don't know why you haven't given me the job yet. You know we're broke. I don't know why you haven't given us the baby yet. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I don't know why you haven't healed my body yet. I trust in God. My Savior, the one who has never failed. My faith fails. But when my faith fails, Brother Jason, he's just getting started to perform. When my faith fails, he's saying, now I've got you. Now you need me. Now you won't praise your money. You won't praise your boss. You won't praise your position. You won't praise yourself. You're going to praise me. Even when I thought I was praising him, there was something in my heart that was praising me. God, you know we came here. We, we, we came. You said go. We quit everything and started this church. That's praising me. That's saying I did something. That's faith. Doesn't work. Faith. Trust says, I don't know what's going on, but I know you're going to work it out for my good. So whether you do it today or 10 years from today or never, I don't think you can fail. I don't think you can fail. I don't think you can drop the ball. I don't think you can quit on me, God. I don't think you can walk away from me. I don't think you can let me have. I don't think you can fail me. Somebody needs to grab the hand of Jesus right now. Throw the net down and say, I trust you. Job said, though he slay me. Job believed God for anything. But when God took everything from him, he said, I don't have faith in him. But I trust him. I don't think he's going to do anything for my kids. I mean, they're gone. But, but, but I trust him. I don't think he's going to bring my servants back. But I trust him. I don't think he's going to bring my, my animals back. But I don't have any faith anymore. But I trust him. And someone needs to get that right now in your spirit. I don't know if he's going to give me the miracle, but I trust him. Even if he's got me on the street, I trust him. If I lose my car, I trust him. If I lose my house, I trust I'm going to trust God. Somebody step out of the pew of faith and step up to an altar of trust and say, Lord, whatever your will is, let it happen. Not my will, but thine be done. Come up here with me. Come on up here as close as you can. It's going to be quiet. It's going to be quiet.
Somebody drop the faith net and pick up trust. You don't have to do anything for me. But I'm not, I'm not backsliding. I'm just letting it go. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not going to happen. I'm just saying it's going to happen your way. However you want to do it is how it's going to happen. I don't have to get the credit. I don't have to get the glory. I don't have to get the attention. I just have to trust you. Even when my faith has failed me. Someone wants you to raise your hands right now. In a situation you cannot fix. In a situation you cannot change. In a situation you cannot and do not know the answer. Everything you try doesn't work. Every way you approach it, it doesn't change anything. Every time you try to bring it up, it just backfires. Every time you try to say, come on, now is the day, it doesn't change. And you're doing everything by faith. And your faith is fading. And your faith is breaking. And you're doing everything you can to hold on. I'm telling you, it's okay to let go. It's okay to let go because God can do more when you let go than anything you can do by holding on. I want you to let go and let the Lord do this in your family. I saw the Lord and he That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I saw the Lord. Somebody ought to get a hold of the Lord right now. And he answered. I saw the Lord. And he heard. And he answered. I saw the Lord. And he heard. And he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I, my sin. I trust him when I don't see him. I trust him when I can't feel him. I trust him when I don't hear him. I trust him when he's not answering my prayer. I trust him when he's not changing my situation. I trust him when I don't know what to do. I trust him. Why? Because he knows what he's doing. And in the end, he'll work it out for my good. He'll work it out.
I trust him when I don't know where he is. His word said he'll never leave me or forsake me. Sometimes the nights are really dark and sometimes the days are really long and really cloudy. It feels like he's a million miles away. Sometimes you pray the I give up prayer. I can't go on anymore. I can't carry this anymore. That's what he's been trying to get you to say the whole time. He wants you to stop trying to carry what only he can carry. You bring the five loaves and two fish, but you can't do the miracle. You cannot make the multiplication happen. You just have to do what only you can do. You have to do what only you can do. Stop. I mean this respectfully, but stop trying to be God. Stop trying to carry 16 crosses on your shoulder. You've only get to carry one cross, and that's your own. I feel like some of you have about 10,000 pounds of pressure on you right now. You feel like I can't, I don't know where anything's going to, I don't know what to do. I want you to get out from that pressure. Say, Lord, I place this in your hands. The reason I feel all the pressure is because I've somehow got myself in this in the driver's seat. I'm sorry for I didn't mean to get in the driver's seat. I was trying to have faith. Somehow I've gotten in the driver's seat of something I can't drive. Somehow I've picked up a cross I can't carry. I'm sorry, God. Sometimes I've I've taken responsibility like like it's on me because there's something in me that wants to praise me are you ready for a stinger somebody give your pride to God right now oh somebody give your arrogance to God right now give your ministry give your reputation give your image somebody give it up right now you need to let go stop being the superhero because you can't play that part in this movie you aren't going to be that one that role has been reserved some people if they don't get to be superman they're going to be the villain if i don't get to be the center of attention i'm going to be the problem in the church let me tell you something there's only one superhero in this show and it's the lord jesus christ he's the only one that can fix everything here our job is to lift him up come on you're not, i'm not asking you to praise me i'm asking you to praise him i'm asking you to worship him i'm asking you to glorify him I want to be famous in my family. I want to take care of all the problems. I want to be the guy that takes care of the problems. That's, that's a superhero complex. As a pastor, you deal with it too because you want to make sure everybody's okay. But I've been learning a valuable lesson the last several months. I can't fix everybody's problems. I can't fix everybody's finances. I can't fix everybody's messes. And while you're getting mad at me, I'm having to trust God. I want to be everything, but he said, this is what he told me. You ready for this? You want to be rebuked? Here's, what me, here's how I got rebuked. He said, you are in my way. You are in my way. And I said, Lord, whatever you got to do, whatever you're teaching me, I'm letting go. And he told me this week, I'm teaching you trust. You've walked by faith with the giants for years, but you have left that dimension and you're now on the floor of a new level and you feel like a baby in the fetal position. You don't know what to do. Stuff's flying all around you. You've never seen before. You can't pick up on. I'm seeing more stuff than I've ever seen. I don't know what to do with it because I'm in a new place. Listen to me. God is taking our church into a new place where we trust.
him. Trust him. God has the resource. God has the person with the money. God has the timing. God has the day where it all works out. with this this is one of my this was like one of my candy stick points as an evangelist but when Mary comes in pregnant with Jesus into Elizabeth's house Elizabeth is like 90 years old or she's really old with this John the Baptist in her belly Mary comes in with Jesus in her belly historians say John the Baptist has not moved in six months there's been no kick there's been nothing Mary walks in with the seed of Jesus, not, not a full developed baby. She just got pregnant. Elizabeth's belly swollen. She looks pregnant, but she don't feel pregnant because nothing's happening. Mary walks in. John the Baptist leaps in Elizabeth's womb. Elizabeth said this to Mary. Blessed is she that believed. There shall be a performance of those things told you from the Lord. In the Greek, it's this. There is an event that will verify your promise. In other words, there's a day on the calendar. Why? Because something is leaping in me that for six months, every whisper has told me it's not really alive. It really didn't happen. This, you've got, you're miscarrying a miracle and something because of you is killing what God was trying to give you. But she said, something in me is alive right now and it's releasing a word to you. Trust in God. Trust in God. I wonder if before we go, you could just one last time throw your hands up and say I trust you say it say it like say it to him until you till you mean it say it until until you really feel it say it until you can feel your hands being removed from the steering wheel say it until you can feel the pressure lifting off your chest say it until you know it's not going to happen in my timing but it's going to happen in his timing he's going to do it his way I had it all figured out my way and he didn't do it oh he let me down I thought but he didn't let me down he just wanted all the glory for what he was about to do the answer is closer than you think the miracle is closer than you think. The wedding is closer mm, than you think. The baby is closer than you think. The job is closer than you think. The building is closer than we think. I love you. I love you. And I trust you. Let's praise him one last time. Don't you love him? Don't you trust him? It's the hardest test you'll ever pass because it requires you not being in control and not getting it your way and taking no credit for it. It's the hardest test you'll pass is you have to not be the man or the lady. You have to let go. But if you pass this test, you'll know in the future when God says faith or trust, you'll know what to do. And if it's faith, you'll speak and God will move it. And if it's trust, you'll just keep walking because God's going to move. That is maturity spiritually. I love you. I bless you in Jesus' name. See you tomorrow night for prayer. Discipleship tonight. If you're not in discipleship, you need to be at 6 o'clock. Brother Cade is going to be selling the raffle tickets. If you need a new car, we're selling tickets for this car. Come on. God will give you.